uh, to your right, well known to yourselves, uh, members of the media, and to my left, uh, our veterans, uh, the MK war veterans, they are here to our left, and uh, I would not go any further than that. Comrade Dan Hato, who is uh, the leader and the convener um, at, at the national level, together with Comrade Dike Lady, uh, Comrades who are a product of Mkonto Wesizwe. I will, without any waste of time, hand over to the Secretary General to read out the statement of the ANC. Over to you, SG. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen <coughs> of uh, the media. The leadership of uh, Mkonto Wesizwe war veterans, members of the National Executive Committee provincial leadership and uh, ladies and gentlemen of the press. Over the 112 years of its existence, the African National Congress has had to confront and defeat many counter-revolutionary schemes which sought to destroy the movement morally, politically, and organizationally, and ultimately derail the people's struggle for fundamental socio-economic transformation. So in seeds of confusion as a basis to scatter the movement and derail the united action of our people has been the headway to counter the potency of the African National Congress, the Alliance and the Mass Democratic Movement, stealing the history, heritage and intellectual property assets of the organization is part of the counter-revolution propaganda aimed at uh, communicating a multiplicity of political outposts, all claiming legitimacy from the proud history of the African National Congress. This is because the architects of these acts of counter-revolution have realized that by themselves they lack the moral integrity to present themselves to society as credible leaders unless they hide behind the history of the movement. Like our four peers, the ANC National Executive Committee has a dual responsibility to defend the organizational integrity and heritage of the ANC and to guarantee the continuity of the national project of fundamental socio-economic transformation. Today we are here at the Electoral Court in Mangaung to legally challenge the use of the name and symbols of Umkonto Wesizu by a new party led by one of the former leaders of the African National Congress. Indeed, heroes can become villains. It is a matter of historical record that MK was a military win of the ANC and it operated under the political direction of the National Executive Committee. It is an integral part of the history and heritage of the ANC. The formation of breakaway parties is part of the strategy and tactics of counter-revolution, whose goal is to stop or derail the National Democratic Revolution. Some of the tactics employed by counter-revolution include divide and conquer, co-opt and corrupt, capture and weaken the democratic state, and unleash violence and create instability. On the other hand, the anti-transformation forces are converging into coalitions whose primary focus is to reverse the transformation agenda led by the African National Congress. The same anti-transformation forces are encouraging and funding rebel breakaway groupings and small parties with the hope that all these efforts will erode the support base of the ANC and force it into coalitions. It is very disturbing to note that some of the parties that masquerade as a radical and have revolutionary sounding rhetoric have common cause with the right-wing forces. They all want to derail the National Democratic Revolution. The formation of this new party that has hijacked the name, legacy, and symbol, symbols of MK is not an accident. 
It is a deliberate attempt to sow confusion by using the proud history of armed struggle against the apartheid regime to lend credibility to what is a blatantly counter-revolutionary agenda. The ultimate aim of the initiatives to form a myriad of small political parties is trying to chip away from all angles the popular electoral support base of the ANC. In this way, those forming these parties are doing so at the behest of their counter-revolutionary masters who literally pay them to liquidate the ANC, morally, politically, and organizationally. All this flows from the old age narrative suggesting that the ANC is too big with the further argument that this is in itself not good for democracy. The ANC majoritarian has been a question mark and a point, a sore point among our counter opponents here at home and globally. Essentially, the size and political posture of the ANC is not good for those whose unjust material interests are threatened by the advent of freedom and democracy. These are forces which over the years have been arrayed against the ANC as the embodiment of the forces for change. Having failed in their various attempts to chip away from moral and political hegemony of the ANC, they have now concentrated themselves as stealing the assets of the African National Congress to create new organization at the direct expense of the ANC. As the ANC were not perturbed by the mushrooming of many political parties, as that is partly an expression of democracy. Even as we know the clandestine forces behind these various initiatives. However, what we will not tolerate is anyone stealing the assets of the organization. The main reason why these forces want to liquidate the ANC politically and organi organizationally is because of the progressive stances the ANC has taken on both domestic and international matters. These forces have, as a result, adopted the idea that the ANC cannot be vanquished or liquidated externally, but through counter-revolutionary forces working from within, who claim to be members of the ANC while stealing its assets and leaving behind their trail of corruption as the basis of how the masses of the people must view the organization. That is why these protagonists of liquid liquidating the ANC claim that they are members of the ANC, so as to hoodwink us hoping against hope that we will not realize they are in fact stealing the assets of the organization. The public posture and pronouncements of members and leaders of the party in question leave no doubt about its anti-constitutional, anti-democratic, ethno-populist, violent and insurrectionary intentions. The party also harbors views that some of the rights enshrined in our constitution should be taken away. It has all the hallmarks of a rebel movement that will not hesitate to resort to insurrection and violence against the people as a bargaining tool should the electoral outcome not favor them. What is strange though, but perhaps not surprising, is that the so-called advocates of democracy and constitutionalism have been silent as those beyond the so-called MK party threaten the very foundation of our democracy through violence. This in itself is revealing on the broader scope of counter-revolution in South Africa. Objectively, the leader of this party, Mr. Jacob Zuma, is actively asserting himself as the figurehead of counter-revolution in South Africa today standing in contrast and contradicting the facade of what he projected throughout his apparent struggle years. This in itself is revealing on the actual motive behind his political participation and the struggle that is ultimately about himself and not the masses of our people. And of course, he has historically abused the masses of the people as he continues to seek to do so today by pretending 
that his selfish needs are in fact the needs of the people. His activities and those of his party fit well in the broader strategy of the right-wing forces of cutting the ANC to size and bringing it below 50%. This party is spreading the untruth that currently the ANC is supposedly controlled by white monopoly capital and foreign forces. This is the same narrative the Guptas hired Bell Potinja to promote and cause serious divisions in the movement and in society. The ANC has adopted very principled positions on major issues here at home and abroad. And this has pit our movement against the right-wing forces globally and domestically. The false accusations that the ANC has sold out only serves to reinforce the work of the global and domestic opponents of the National Democratic Revolution who are working tirelessly to ensure regime change in our country. Mr. Jacob Zuma is telling the people that he was badly treated by the ANC. Nothing is further from the truth. The ANC became too ambivalent and accommodative of leaders whose ethical orientation was at odds with its own values. Renewal is setting the bar higher again to ensure that the ANC never ever allows an individual leader to lower its ethical bar to be accommodative. The ANC will not allow any party to steal its legacy and trademarks from that of MK to the uniform of the ANC Women's League. Mr. Zuma's reference to the ANC as the ANC of Ramaphosa, quote-unquote, was a cheap stunt to draw the president of the ANC into a personal tit-for-tat. He was effectively ignored. This party wants to engage in electoral democratic contestation whilst lambasting the very democratic process. He seeks to commit electoral fraud, politically, morally, and legally speaking. Thus, whilst participating in electoral contestation, it is a participation that goes only as far as it serves the leader's needs. This new party is a gathering largely of people who are either in trouble with the law or in trouble with renewal. What is common is anger, fear and hatred for the renewed ANC and loathing of rule of law. A renewed ANC must be out of power and an ethical, capable and developmental state will be too dangerous for those in trouble with the law. Narrow nationalism and populism over the past decade, right-wing Tea parties led by right-wing nationalists and reckless populists have become commonplace in politics. All these leaders are either right-wing ultra-nationalists or populists. They are all anti-establishment with anarchists and counter-insurgents. They are anti-democracy and anti-constitutionalist and anti-the rule of law. Their personalities are bigger than their parties. They are charismatic, one-person show populist. They all have dictatorial, authoritarian, big man syndrome tendencies. They run fear-based mobilization and fear-based negative campaigns, which are racist, sexist, afrophobic, homophobic, ethno-nationalist or tribalist from different national or religious groups who have not embraced the values of the constitution. They all run very powerful and effective propaganda campaigns based on what they term alternate truths which they've learned from their masters elsewhere in the world, which in reality means fake news or falsehoods. As you would have seen in South Africa, the era of fake news and falsehoods has encapsulated the social media space, TikTok, everything else you can think about. They all have disruption and rebellion built into the DNA of their parties and campaigns. They project a capacity that threatens to disrupt and destabilize the government. There is no ideological principles and coherence. The campaigns are all based on rhetoric. And that is what they stand for. The African National Congress is here today in Mangaou to make a statement that before the courts 
and in particular the electoral court, who have made our case, and they will stand with whatever outcome that, it, that comes with it. We know our winning of power and contesting power to win it overwhelmingly is not dependent on the courts. We are here in Mangawu to claim what is ours, which is Umkonto Wesizwe Party. Next week we will proceed to Peter Marie's back for the patent of Umkonto Wesizwe. So it doesn't end here. And uh, we believe in the rule of law. And we want to thank our lawyers who have uh, taken up our case and went uh, with uh, great professionalism and uh, diligently so argued before the courts and uh, before the judges our appeal as the African National Congress. So that's where we stand and we thank our supporters, members, everywhere in the country who have understood the actions that have been taken by the organization. Our call to our members is all hands on deck. Counter-revolution will be defeated by the masses of our people. And the African National Congress is rooted among the masses of our people. It will not be defeated in the corridors of power in the air-conditioned offices, but by working amongst our people who embrace the ANC on a daily basis. And we thank our people for their continued, renewed support and belief in the ANC. For doing so, it's not the belief on an individual, it's the belief on the vehicle of the people and by the people and at their disposal, which all we've got the responsibility to defend. And that is what we wish to thank uh, this afternoon, uh, coming to Mangawu to register our case uh, in the electoral court. I thank you. Thank you very much, um, SG. And uh, with that, I'd like to turn to members of the media and uh, to take any questions that you may have. Yes, uh, Zianda. Um, thank you very much. Yes. Um, Mr. Mbalulo, part of what we read in court today was on the issue of urgency and, and one of the arguments that was made is that the ANC took its own time which would be indicative of uh, what was actually said in court of the Secretary General who might have been fast asleep because you did not actually deal with the issue of the registration of the party when it happened, when the ANC found out, because the issue of the logo will be dealt with next, next week. So do you think this is an indictment on how you are running affairs in the ANC? The second thing is we've just come from, and we've gone to a where um, there's too many rallies, so to speak, with before former And it would seem, of course, that it's a continuation of the battle of the, the history of the but should the electoral court rule in favor of the ANC by deregistering in court of Caesar, are you concerned at all as the ANC about any possible violence since there's already been <coughs> about this if they don't get a two-thirds majority? And lastly, on a technical uh, on a technicality, is former President Jacob Zuma still a member of the ANC? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I could uh, have a follow-up. My brother over here. I am John Sengaba from the Business Weekly. From? From the Business Weekly. Uh, my question is, this court case is not diverting the ANC's attention from the election. That's what we see turning around uh, the complaints. And whilst I was asking that, do you think that you will win this case? Because the former president says he is confident that they will win this case, citing the history of MK. And He's going to? You will win the case, uh, citing the, 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 the history of the MK. And then, uh, then on the side, that, that should you win the case? Should you win? What happens then? What happens once you do? Thank you. 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 Thank
Thank you very much. Uh, but I'm going to take uh, my sister over there, and then um, I'll take yourself, my brother. Please go ahead. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for the, <coughs> for the questions. Um, there's been an argument in court about issues of time, and I wish to leave it there. The characterization and apportion uh, blame and singling out an individual is just a question of irritation. Uh, that must be dealt with as such, because uh, that matter is being tested in court in relation to that question. Um, when you deal with issues in office and how you challenge political parties in the context of uh, the electoral system and the IEC is really a matter of efficiency from both sides. Here in this case we are arguing against the IEC together with Jacob Zuma's party which defend uh, which defend uh, them uh, stealing the logo and at the same time the symbol of the NC, which is well known. So, in simpler terms, we will not be here uh, if Zuma named this party Jacob Zuma Msholo's uh, party. We wouldn't be here. Uh, we'll just uh, accept that he has left. If Zuma has got credibility, on his own. Why is he not standing on his own? Why does he take symbols of the ANC? If he's got credibility and the standing in society, and he believes in his moral uh, uh, standing in South Africa, why is he not forming a party outright and taking symbols of the ANC? The reason is that he cannot. He cannot. He's got to take part of what belongs to the ANC, which is what the people follow of South Africa. And it goes with him. And that is why he will defend using Umkonto Wissi's historical role in the struggle for liberation. 
he will use that to defend himself and say we will win because now umkonto was his history and role in the struggle belong to zuma no it doesn't it belongs to the people of this country led by the liberation movement called the african national congress the graves of nelson mandela attending wherever they are in their graves for the fact that Umkonto Wesizwe has now been apportioned in terms of its history to an individual who on his own basis has not put up a political and ideological posture as to why does he form a political party and why does a party in his name arise in the broader political space he's trying to argue that in a way but uh, at the end of the day he does not sustain it by standing on his own, by saying, I'm forming a party, and that's it. Malema went to form a party called EFF in his own name and right and fought for it. Why is Zuma afraid to form his own and say that uh, I'm forming a party to fight for land and he steals the ANC symbols? We will not be here today, and probably you are right, wasting our time. It is a waste of time, indeed, precisely because a uh, waste of time and resources fighting over a matter that belongs to our party, unfortunately, not to other parties, but to the African National Congress in history. And uh, because Umkondo West in terms of its history, is not far away from the African National Congress. Uh, many other things that have been raised on the matter of time have been argued in court, and we, we leave it then. We leave those issues there. And court will pass judgment on those particular issues. And then we have argued them with the IEC. And that is why we are at the electoral court. And our, 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 our lawyers have argued that matter uh, quite uh, diligently and professionally, uh, like we said. So we will not be diverted uh, by the issue of uh, what it calls to an individual in relation to follow up on matters because at the end of the day it will end up being a case of defense of an individual whereas it is not. Uh, the, 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 the case has been argued and what we have done as an organization to defend um, the right to the symbol of Mkonto Esizu. Violence, are we concerned about that? Uh, we have characterized teapot parties that resort to violence and intimidation and uh, mobilizing people on the basis of threats and uh, fears. Um, rhetoric. If you believe in your ideas, there's no need to threaten democracy. And democracy must defend itself. And all of those who are peace-loving, democratic and democrats in our country and believe in our constitutionalism must abhor such actions. Nobody else has got the right um, to uh, threaten violence as a means to achieve their goals in a democratic state. And the democratic state must defend all its citizens such that uh, activities we come to see by July riots never repeat themselves again in our country. Nobody can say if things don't go my way in a constitutional court and if my leader is not registered by the IEC, there will be violence. We can all resort to that if we did not have a state. We are not stateless. And uh, South Africa is a democratic state, not a banana republic. It's neither a failed state. Our democracy works, as it has been proven over the past 30 years. We coexist, even with people who have broke away from the ANC, and we did nothing to them. We contested them through the polls. The same we will do with Jacob Zuma. Win or lose in the, in the electoral court, we'll contest him on the ground. We are not going to call members of the ANC to be violent and fight uh, erstwhile ANC members on the ground. We will accept the outcome of the court. We have made our case. But we'll continue to challenge the trademark of the ANC, which is what we are doing next week. If they lose, good for them. But we have taken a political decision to challenge the existence of MK uh, because we believe that uh, how it was registered uh, 
through the IEC, it is a matter that we believe needed to be challenged, and we have challenged that and argued that particular case in court. We don't think that it has followed all the necessary prescripts, and uh, this was just a fly-by-night arrangement. Quick, quick. It's, it's registered and using technical issues, which unfortunately we've got to argue in court, which we've done so. That uh, why we, we feel that uh, things were not so much uh, uh, transparent in terms of dealing with this particular case. So we have argued those matters and uh, the judgment has been reserved and then we'll wait for that. So we are not deterred. We're not going to win an election uh, anyhow either than campaigning as we do right now on the ground. Uh, in terms of convincing people to vote for the ANC. If we don't convince people to vote for the ANC and why, they will walk away from us and all of that. And we don't believe that uh, others do have, but that will be tested on the ground, even that convincing and asking people to vote for us. We have never taken it for granted as a given. We have taken it as something that we need to work on and nudge all the time uh, throughout the length and breadth of South Africa, there is no change even in this election, and that is exactly what we are doing. Zuma is not a member of the ANC. He's been suspended and charged. The day of his dismissal and uh, whether he will be dismissed and all of that, it will. It is a matter that will be determined by ANC committees, the disciplinary committee, as the time goes on. All I can tell you, he has not responded. Uh, to any of the things that have been sent to him and that uh, he has just uh, gone the way he has gone. Uh, he started by supporting MK, now he's a leader uh, on the 16th. So when he started, he said, I'm supporting them, I'm going to vote for them, not the ANC. He was not a leader. Now he's a leader of MK. He's number one in their list. At least that one that is leaked to have seen. So we don't know the future with regard to that, but he didn't start as a leader. So it tells you the modus operandi of the party itself, that the modus operandi of the party has actually been a clandestine operation, which in itself has worked with broader forces in the country, which it has claimed that is going to build a, 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 a front of black political parties, if not a melting pot. And Jacob Zuma has now become a figurehead of that front, which we characterize as counter-revolution in political terms, because it is firmly against what we stand for as the African National Congress. So he is not a member of the ANC. That decision has been taken. We have communicated that decision, and it is very clear to everybody. He has not contested it. And uh, he has gone on to claim his space and to lead his political party in whatever way he does. So we don't have a problem with anyone breaking away, forming a political party, descending from the ANC. But if you use our symbols, it's like using ANC colors and go and register the IEC will challenge you. It's as simple as that. So uh, it will raise a brohaha in the public domain because it is Jacob Zuma, a person who was a deputy president of the NC, a person who served as a president, not for one term, two terms, deputy president, not for one term, two terms, and uh, who served at the highest echelons of the ANC post and burning as a deputy secretary general of the ANC, who served as a national chairperson of the ANC, uh, for a very longest of time. So it will raise the biggest uh, brohaha uh, about it. There's nothing you can do about it. The ANC, therefore, cannot take and fold uh, and say that uh, we're not going to challenge this matter because it's Jacob Zuma. Cannot be the case. And uh, we have taken a political choice and made a political choice to challenge the matter in court. Does the uh, business week, uh, this divert ANC from electionary? Not at all. It doesn't. Uh, as a matter of fact, it has energized our election campaign and our ground from the point of view of our membership. Uh, as you would have seen today, we had uh, hundreds and hundreds uh, of members of the ANC who came to say we are here to defend our party. 
Even here in this room, you've got commanders and commissars of Nkontoesizu. We need to characterize the Jacob Zuma Nkontoesizu. It's not really members of Nkontoesizu who, who are disgruntled to have gone to the party. If you look today and you look at Dan Hato, who's the longest serving MK commander, who are still in the NC. Of course, you, you've got those splinters, Des Van Royen, and all of that, who have gone that other side, and so on. Yeah, but a, lo a lot of MK members are here. We know that our soldiers and former uh, 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 war veterans have got issues in terms of their welfare. We, dis we disaggregate those issues from this MK opportunity. Because you need to understand <coughs> it as such. Zuma was a president. He didn't resolve soldiers' issues entirely. We are still dealing with that when he left. We've got the War Veterans Department, which is dealing with these matters, and we're attending to them. And uh, we don't apportion that failure to him as a person. We look at ourselves in the mirror, too, that we need to resolve issues of war veterans. And we cannot then globally say MK a party of Jacob Zuma, which has been formed out of opportunism and stealing the ANC asset like that, it's a problem of MK. No. We've got soldiers here. We've got MK combatants uh, who are still with us, and they do have uh, grievances. They do have issues, uh, which as the ANC, this week and even next week, we are resolving all of those particular matters, including their recognition as a structure including the issues that they are addressing on their own in relation to unity of Nkondo Wesizwe, but equally war veterans, not just ANC, but broadly speaking. Everyone who fought for liberation has got issues of social welfare in this country, a matters that government is attending to, and we ourselves, as the ANC, we are working with our own MK soldiers to address those particular matters. Zuma will win the case, it's possible he can uh, win the case, because winning the case really is not a moral issue. It's a question of who put the best argument forward and what is legally permissible. And that is the point. We believe, too, we stand the ground to win the case. We've put a cogent case uh, uh, forward. He's got an advantage because IEC agrees with him in a particular way. But we have challenged even the IEC in that regard. And then uh, the Electoral Court is no better platform than to look at the facts and at the same time make a, a judgment on the matter. So it doesn't end there. We will go on to claim our trademark and all of that. And that is what we will do. So he wins the case for who? Will he go to sleep uh, well that he won the case for stealing an asset of the ANC? and that uh, he has plunged the revolution uh, in a crisis or uh, in a precarious position, that's him. At the age of 80, will he go to sleep well that uh, he's doing something for the revolution? He's deepening it, he's doing everything that is good. I wouldn't be proud of that uh, because I would only be proud if you don't believe in the ANC currently in terms of its leadership, you break away. You don't steal because you want to confuse people and at the same time they must vote for you by default. We've got political parties in this country who are on the ballot to benefit out of ANC colors. There's nothing we can do about it because they are recognized. And then uh, they don't campaign, they don't have manifestos, but every time we look at uh, the scoreboard after the elections, they are there. Two seats, three seats one seated local government that's what we see so we will not step back on things that will impact and you know have an impact on our image in terms of contest of elections like we said uh, uh, we are claiming what is rightfully ours we have not made jacob zuma our manifesto we've got a manifesto we don't talk about he talk about us every day which manifesto has he put across and that he addressed himself to the people. That shows you the crisis of the mob and opportunism. There's nothing there. And you will never find anything. If there's anything that will come out of that particular Zuma party, 
is just going to be a concoction, uh, which is basically a critique of what they believe should happen in the ANC. So we're still there. We're still radical in terms of economy and doing all the things. The ANC on the to, to, today is standing in the international front in defense of uh, political positions that nobody else in history has ever, you know, we live up to our four years in terms of what we defend uh, going forward. And that is our moral high ground that we occupy. SAPC, the selfishness of individual is not determined uh, as an act of uh, one single activity. Uh, it, it is determined by, by history and the behavior of individuals in terms of their conduct uh, over a period of time. That is why they say heroes can become villains in the history of struggle. And uh, this could be one example. So it's a dialectical thing, you know, that what you perceive to be revolutionary can only be praised once it is no more because you'll say that one is tried and tested because he's deep six feet underground he has never sold out but what history have told us in the south african struggle and revolution is that people you perceive to be revolutionaries as long as they are alive can disappoint you and basically do things that are opposite jacob zuma of today and jacob zuma of 10 years ago and go into the clips and the things that you would have said what will you say about it when people in the anc didn't want him as a president they didn't like him as a president they opposed him as a sitting president in government and all of that uh, he himself then began to characterize those in the anc who are doing those things as not the revolutionaries and apolitical and today it's him who's leading from the front and doing exactly the opposite of what he want us about so political education and consciousness when it leaves you it doesn't say goodbye it just go it just go it doesn't care you are 80 years or how old you are but it just goes and uh, this could be <coughs> one example of what we are dealing with here today and then uh, so the selfishness come to be seen for what it is today that you can abandon everything and history and your contribution to the struggle and then stand against so what tools do you apply to come to a conclusion that you and your friends in south africa you will gather enough vote to topple the anc and at the same time uh, it will put you in the higher pedestal in terms of the revolutionary agenda, which we don't know what is it, that revolutionary agenda. Because people's association with Zuma is really not on the basis of uh, principles. It's just based on love. Sometimes, about, you know, it's like when you go to church of Bushir, and then uh, you say, I, I, I receive, you know, and then uh, you receive. And, and, and even here, Sometimes, about, I just love Bob. Now I cried when he was arrested. I saw tears on my cheeks because I couldn't see a revolutionary like him going to the guy going to jail in a democratic dispensation. It comes with me and the feeling of love from a young activist of the NC who have also had a taste, not as him, a taste of what it means to fight for freedom and to see one of our own for different reasons but it had to happen because it is a rule of law sometimes i wouldn't want to see doom do wouldn't want to see me or matlengi but he's going down the drain and then he's experiencing these things sometimes they've got to happen because this is the path we have chosen and what is that path is the path of the rule of law a functioning rule of law fighting corruption and all these things it means you deal even with those that you love. Go and learn from China. They too went through what we went through. But for them to deal with corruption in China, they had to deal with the best of the best, not the lizards, but the, the crocodiles. So these are the well-known people in China 
who went to the gallows for being corrupt leaders. I suppose they've got a track record in the struggle. One day something happens to me or it happens to somebody. You can cry that we're together, but there's nothing you can do because we have chosen the path of the rule of law. We will never negotiate that path and seek to redefine it either wise, either than for it to be different. And that is why we are building state organs for that particular purpose which were riddled and flattened. So in this particular instance, it's a question of love that people follow. Indeed, you know, uh, and that is it and so on. So I saw somebody who were addressing there in Joburg this week. And then he comes and he grabs a mic. And then he says, when's the new Zoom? And then, uh, you know, they take a mic from him. But it's quite clear that the chap is overzealous, but he's not his, at his best. But uh, I look at him and then I realize that why would you come and cry for an older person, not for the current generation of leaders who are in the country at the present moment? And these are the questions that you need to ask yourself uh, because at the end of the day, the future is what we think of. And at that time, we were discussing issues of copyright that affected him. He came and broke down the meeting about something else which his peers never gave him a chance they just took the mic uh, and then he sat down and cooled down now uh, central tv uh, uh, do we stand a chance in kzn do we stand a chance in mangawu in limpopo uh, anywhere else we do stand a chance because we believe in our ability to mobilize against all odds um, uh, so that's what we're doing and people follow the ANC every day and then we get into their houses, we talk to them, we humble ourselves and then they follow the ANC manifesto it is the ANC manifesto that will answer that question on the 29th of May and uh, we know that uh, victory that we have vowed to work for when we met in Bombela that we will work for ANC victory is what we're doing. It's not a given. So we can't answer that question like one plus one is equals to two. So it has got to be a mathematical answer that you've got to work for your victory on a daily basis in science. Uh, if people are sitting there, they've got all the things that the ANC have done. You don't convince them. Uh, you talk about one thing all the time, uh, and talk about issues that are in the periphery and you don't talk about your manifesto uh, you are not campaigning people will not follow you and that is it and all what we're doing here today is to explain uh, the case of jacob zuma in relation to mk party um you are asking central tv is it not late um to challenge this no it's not late uh, for the mere fact that you will be on the ballot and then you are contesting as in terms of our symbol, you've got to be challenged uh, in relation to that, and any party will do so. Um, that is what uh, is important uh, we need to do. Wh one thing that you need to understand, it is, it is not late, because this thing started late last year, because we challenged this MK party, and we won, and that is why there was a big argument on the letter. And the process of the second, the second process of the, the registration, it's not straightforward. <coughs> it just happened and people said, no, it was gazetted. And then if you didn't see stats to run, and therefore you are late, and therefore uh, this party legitimately has to stand. So they've been going back and forth, and we got the result because we challenged. We got the result not... They cannot stand. And that is the letter that has been a bone of contention. So people who argue the issue of time, you must understand where we come from with this issue. Because we have not been sleeping on the, on the job in terms of challenging MK party and registration. But how it happened later was very dubious, so to say. But we are law-abiding. We don't want uh, to cry foul over matters that we can argue in court and we have done that so like i said 
will abide with the outcome of the court, but we will not leave it lying down. And that is what uh, is important for us. So we have been dealing with this matter. And uh, we knew at a given point what is it uh, all about. Uh, we have not uh, fired Zuma. Uh, Zuma uh, we have not fired Zuma. Zuma is not a member of the ANC. Uh, he's been suspended. And you have asked that question elsewhere. I've answered it. He's suspended, subjected to the disciplinary process. And that is it. So he's not our member as we speak now. So the question of whether he's fired or not, really, it's immaterial. That matter would be processed by the structures concerned of the ANC. Lastly, Zuma's party threats, um, he will never, Zuma, come and correct those threats. Uh, if he believes in democracy and peace, he should call his members to order. And that's what I was referring to when I talked about his political family um, and uh, his backyard. He must call his backyard. There's no member of the ANC who have signed a, an electoral code of conduct who can go out and threaten any political party, including Zuma's party. If it is recognized, registered, they have to contest. We've got to go to the ground and work. <coughs> Zuma will never condemn. That is why the law must kick in. There must be no political understanding for anarchists in this country who deliberately go out of their way and threaten a democratic process. So the rule of law and the electoral code of conduct uh, must kick in and uh, political parties must pay for the activities that are rogue of their members. Members have got the right. The constitution guarantees that even the person you don't like as your opponent, even those that we know as we characterize them here in our statement, who they are that we know where they get the resources from, our constitution protects them um, in South Africa for them to stand. And that is uh, the strongest um, uh, part of our democracy that we celebrate. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, SG. Um, <coughs> with that uh, responded to comprehensively, this now brings us uh, to the end of the press briefing. Thank you very much, uh, members of the media. Thank you. Thank you.